or pay as low as $1.99 per month. Change your life today. Call 844-4M-DENTAL. Watch Off the Clock, today at 2 on KTLA 5. Good morning, I'm Eric Spielman. President Biden travels to Israel to offer support after the terrorist attack there, and he gives his views about that deadly explosion at the hospital in Gaza. We'll have the latest. Good morning, I'm Trevor Shirley, live in Washington. It appears Congressman Jim Jordan's second attempt at becoming Speaker has also failed. So where do House Republicans go from here? I'll take a look at that coming up just ahead. Good morning, I'm Frank Buckley. Police are investigating another burglary involving a third Dodgers player. Details on what happened just ahead. Good morning, I'm Jessica Holmes. We know now which Rite Aid locations are closing here in Southern California after the company filed for bankruptcy. What patients need to know just ahead. Good morning, I'm Sam Rubin, new here at 10 o'clock. It is one of those TV court shows, but with an interesting twist. You'll meet the uh, new host of that show. We'll talk about that. And George Clooney may be on the way to the Oscars with a movie all about rowing. It's getting a lot of attention. We'll show you the trailer. It just dropped coming up. All right, good morning, everybody. And winds are starting to pick up just a little bit out of the uh, desert area. Our Morongo Casino camera's starting to bounce around just a touch. And clear skies out there for the beaches were still socked in for many communities. Highs warming up, though. Coastal, 75. Not so much in the beaches, but downtown, back up to 87 degrees. San Fernando Valley, close to 198. Same thing in the Inland Empire. Orange County Inland, 89 degrees. High desert, 91 degrees. Frank, back to you. President Biden is in Israel this morning to show U.S. support following a brutal and deadly attack by Hamas on October 7th. Meantime, there are rising humanitarian concerns in Gaza, where Israel has cut off the flow of food, fuel, and water. KTLA's Eric Spillman in the newsroom with more. Eric, good morning. Morning, Frank. President Biden was the first U.S. president to visit Israel while it is involved in a war. The country is reeling from the Hamas terrorist attack 11 days ago. 1,400 Israelis, mostly civilians, were murdered. The president offered his condolences and his strong support for Israel. He arrived in Israel this morning. He walked down the steps of Air Force One and was greeted on the tarmac at Ben Gurion Airport near Tel Aviv by the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. In a speech later, the president said he knows that the terrorist slaughter of Israelis has left a deep wound. October 7th, which was sacred to a sacred Jewish holiday, became the deadliest day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. It has brought to the surface painful memories and scars left by millennia of anti-Semitism and the genocide of the Jewish people. The world watched then. It knew, and the world did nothing. We will not stand by and do nothing again. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. The president met with first responders to the Hamas massacre. He also spoke to relatives of the victims and to the families of the 200 Israeli hostages now being held in Gaza. He says the U.S. is working hard to negotiate for their release, but the president is also worried about human suffering in Gaza. He says the vast majority of people in Gaza do not support Hamas. They have very little electricity, food, and water. He said he has persuaded Israel's government to allow humanitarian aid through the border with Egypt as long as there are inspections to make sure Hamas doesn't get it. And he told Israel that during the conflict in Gaza, Israel must live by its ideals. Like the United States, you don't live by the rules of terrorists. You live by the rule of law. When conflicts flare, you live by the law of wars. You can't give up what makes you who you are. If you give that up, then the terrorists win, and we can never let them win. The president also says that based on his analysis of data from the U.S. Defense Department, he does not believe that Israel had anything to do with a deadly explosion yesterday at a hospital in Gaza. The blast at the Ahli Arab Hospital was powerful. People who live in Gaza had been sheltering there from Israeli airstrikes. The building and the courtyard outside was full of patients. Gaza's health ministry, which is run by Hamas, initially said as many as 500 people were killed. Hamas immediately blamed Israel for the carnage, claiming it was the result of an Israeli airstrike.